Well guys, can you guess what I'm about to start? The pit I hate. Well, I don't hate it, but you know, it's not wood, is it? Uh, the undercarriage. Uh, I've got a piece of possibly slightly too light undercarriage here, but um, I think it'll stiffen up with, with the time it's all soldered up. First thing I like to do is to shine the wire. I know I'm going to get my greasy hand paints all over it, but if I shine it now, then when I come to solder it, I'll only have to shine it a little bit more where I've sort of basically been handling it. Any manufacturing oil or anything that's been on it, the bulk of it will have been removed. So that's what I'm just going to, oops, I might have to clear the bench. They show you the undercarriage half, drawn half uh, size, half scale. The width of the uh, undercarriage is shown as 75 millimetres, but um, I'm going to make it 70 because I, I just don't want it sticking out past the edges of the fuselage too much. So that's the, sh that's the dimension up, across and down. There's two different sizes for front and back. Um, and also, I don't know if you see that, let's just move it around a minute. Also, uh, the undercarriage comes down and then bends forward and up and this one comes back and they bind together. Um, so they don't just come straight out like that because there's a separate axle piece. The first thing to do is to bend that little shape at the bottom. And what I normally end up doing is bending it 180 degrees the wrong way and then when you bend it back the wire snaps. So I'm just going to uh, let's start with the um, back one. So there's a little up stand which you bind that goes at about oh, quite a big angle. And my tip for bending undercarriages is don't move on to the next part and the next bend until you're absolutely happy with the previous one because uh, you'll only you only make it worse compound your errors as you go on and you end up with something that's way out so try and uh, try and get it right see I'm spending time on this if I don't get the angle right it's not going to um, meet the other one coming down that's pretty good that's bang on really yeah okay next bend it's about the width of the pliers I'm going to a little bit more, maybe about six millimeters around the bend a little bit. Try and keep it upright, and then it's a similar angle. This is where I'm going to run out of space. Right, okay. So I bent that. Too much, so a fair margin. Just adjust that back. It's just, it's just um, practice. I, I am better at bending under carriages than I used to be. Sometimes it goes just perfect, straight in there. Some bends, other bends like this. How many times? There we go. Right now, don't make it to that length because you're looking at it on the side, so it's not true length. So uh, this is the back one, which is the taller one. So I'm going to now go from here and up to there. And you can mark on it, you can put masking tape, you can do whatever you like, but I'm just, I just do this. It works out pretty well. Now, the question is, which direction does it bend? So if that's like that, there, like that. I don't know how accurate that is. I think I'm on the right path. Let's keep bending. Let's see why I hate this. If I mess this up, I've got to go and buy some more wire. That's 
pretty good. Yep. Okay, so you can see it's not sitting level, it's up, so I've got to make sure these two lines are parallel before I go on. It's too much, pretty easy to do. A bit more. Okay, let's trim that off. Before I do, I'm just gonna give that a bit of a sand in. It's gonna be soldered. the back one should go like that I might end up twisting those in slightly we'll see by the way when you come to solder this it's easier if you make a distance so I'll get a piece of wood I'll put a couple of bits of scrap wood either side and get that locked into position and solder it on the bench That's pretty good. That's very good, actually. Really happy with that. Okay, trim it off. Give it a polish, actually. It'll shine up. I like to shine it before I bend it, really, and even before I cut it, because you end up with a little, a little um, uh, rough bit on the end, which makes it difficult to sand and get clean. So if I do it now, you can use. Um, We've got some actually. You can use anything to clean it up. Wire wool is good. Old bit of sandpaper, just as good. Next step is to let's just um I've got to make up a jig. Okay, so that is going to solder into that, and then the axle is going to go between. So I'm going to make up a jig, and by that I mean sometimes you can put it straight to the bottom of the fuselage, but I'm going to be sewing this to cross braces, uh, which is this hardwood here. Um, so I can't do that. So I need a piece of wood to simulate the bottom of the fuselage. All right, I found a little bit of wood, MDF I think it is. And what I've done, I've put on um, a couple of bits of ply and just CA them in place, making sure they're 90 degrees, the edge, and I just put the piece of uh, spare axle wire between the two and then glued them so they fit perfect. Um, and then that will just go on there and I'll just hold that in place with a block and the same this side. And I'm gonna stop them from going sideways just by CA in a piece, a little bit of bolster each side. But before I commit to uh, finally putting them in place I need to just give them one last clean you can file it sand it anything you want just clean it up and then don't touch it again because your fingers will be oily I'm just gonna CA that in position Let these blocks come in handy yeah <laughs> brilliant Okay, so what I need to do now is uh, to bind that up with some copper wire. Go and find some copper wire and make sure it's lovely and shiny and then just bind it around as tight as I can. Back soon. So I've got some of this wire. Um, it's, it's coated copper wire and I think I've got all the coating off but we'll find out if it doesn't solder. So I'm just binding it around and around uh, finish it off round and round and there we are they're both bound now uh, this side actually went a lot better than this side that's the way it goes so I'm now ready to solder the solder itself I'm going to clean because that will be dirty and there's all sorts of solder you can get silver solder it's probably better for this job but I've never had undercarriage come apart solder with its own uh, flux. I'm using ordinary regular soldering flux paste. Again, people say you shouldn't use it. Um, it's not as good as others, but 
just use what you've got and I've never had a problem put lots of flux around it's the flux that chases away all the dirty things and helps the solder to flow don't be afraid to get loads on there and also what I'm going to do I'm going to put a tissue across the plan because it's going to drip I don't want to spoil it particularly like that now I'm going to look at my iron I've got a great big one here um, 150 watt <laughs> it's a big iron so it's gradually heating up here I'll put flux on there could do with cleaning a bit but let's see if we melt some solder on there not yet so what I plan to do is to put that under there get it nice and hot and just flow the solder in that's the plan I'm just going to open the window fumes a bit so you can see so far it's it's just a matter of getting getting um, things bent one bend at a time and then when I was bending these up off camera I spent quite a bit of time just getting them just as perfect as I could because if the wires are actually touching it helps to <laughs> solder it together there we go it's going now then let's have a go at this one so what we want to do I'll also put that in there like that what we're going to do is try and heat the wire up we should heat fairly quickly but it's going to hiss because of the flux I'm just going to start adding solder to the end of the iron because that will help to transfer the heat so far nothing happening just put a bit of flux on the end of the solder it helps to keep things moving and it gets nice and hot there we go it's flowing nicely now I can't see that side and I'm not going to bend over it because it's going to blow straight in the face Take that out my face for a minute. That looks good. That looks all right. Happy with that. Let's have a go at this side. Just let that cool naturally. There's no rush. Again, I'm just going to add a bit of solder to the iron to sort of bridge the gap between the work surface and I'm soldering and the iron itself so if the heat can't transfer it's, it makes for a more efficient transfer nice and hot oh it's flowing itself look it's just pulling itself in Cleansiness is, is the important thing now. Okay, let's stop there. Let's just give that a wipe. Put a bit of flux on it. Put a bit of solder on it for next time. Get it nice and sober if I can. Okay, we'll let that cool, guys, and see what we got. Let's unplug it. Quite important to get the flux off if you can. Because I think that sort of corrodes things. So I'll get some IPA on that in a minute. Let's see what we've got, shall we? How's that looking? Flux on it, but yeah, look at that. That's really good. One undercarriage. The axle is bound to a piece of hardwood which is what I found here it says 12 by 8 but I've got 10 by 8 so that'll do I know on the uh, DH2 it has simulated spring in it doesn't detail it here but it works really well and that is the axle is bound the axle shaft itself is bound in two places and the end of it is allowed to spring slightly which gives the wheels a little bit of uh, suspension and I like that idea so I'm probably going to copy that because it doesn't actually plan doesn't show 
anywhere that I've spotted anyway. Now to do that, there's bits of balsa 16, 1.5, something like that, balsa, hard balsa anyway, to make up the wires into a decent looking undercarriage. All right, let's offer it up, see what we're talking about here. Um, the bigger one goes towards the back. So it's going to go like that and then in there like that. And I'm going to bind them to bits of hardwood, which I'm going to glue across. So that will go like that. And there's our undercarriage. Good job. Can't fix it yet because the lower wing has to go on before the undercarriage goes in. Because there's there's a gap here. This is open, completely open, this section. I've got to make a hatch. But once the wing is in with its um, simulated, once the wing is in with its dihedral brace in, put the, put the wing in and then fit the undercarriage. Good, another little job done. I've been busy-ish. I put the undercarriage together, uh, made a slight boo-boo. Uh, first of all, let me explain. On the DH2, this is the way it is with the uh, hardwood cross piece um, above the uh, join. Um, the plan shows it under the join. I've done it this way because it's easy, it cradles it nicely and the uh, soldered joint is a little bit bumpy even though I uh, filed it a bit you don't want to file off all your winding so so I put it this side and it works perfectly well um, the other thing is so it's sewn in the middle and that allows a bit of suspension soldered this little copper tab as we call it onto the uh, undercarriage at the front because whilst the back is uh, solid. I think the front's going to slide from right to left, which I don't want it to happen. Uh, let's just move that up. So that will go in the back. And that will screw on the firewall like that. And what I'm hoping is, and we'll do this alive, I'm hoping that this will bend up just enough to allow me to fit the wing underneath. Just screw that on there. Let me just put up the lap a minute. There we go. So that stops it from sliding left and right. I can now glue on, in theory, I'll, in a minute I'll test it. I can now glue on the little cowl extension piece. That go on there like that. And then this, yeah, look, I can bend that up just lovely. Slide the wing in when it's covered, put the back down and then sew that in position. That's a good result. I'm happy with that, but while it's on, I could make up the strut legs, couldn't I, to make sure that uh, they're in and fitted, and that's the last of the woodwork then. Uh, we'll end it there, guys. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I know I did. Uh, so I'm going to go outside and do that. I'm going to cover it with doculum to start, and then we'll put the tissue on, and then she's going to look like a real aeroplane.